when you're out of practice with a thing, you forget what it is you have that can make you good at a thing. You know, the human body is designed perfectly to be able to swim. It's designed perfectly to be able to swim. You can hold your breath, breathe out to allow the carbon dioxide to go out, breathe in when you can get the oxygen, you can cuff your hands upward to allow you to uh, descend and push them downward in the water to allow you to ascend. You kick your feet just properly as you relax <coughs> and propel your body either vertically or horizontally across the water. I know this simply because I've taken a class. I can't swim. <laughs> and I took the class and you know put one of those life jackets and movies around <laughs> me and as long as I, my feet, Brother Marcus, can hit the ground, well. I'm tough dog. Uh, right? Yeah, I go and I'll do all the turns underwater. You won't need to do it. Right. It's just that my feet can touch the ground. That's right. I know all about my surroundings and what I got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the moment the instructor said, now, come on over here <laughs> and jump on in this 10 feet. <laughs> Water. And everybody came and just got to jumping. Now, I got this life jacket on. <laughs> but my feet, brother Tony, it won't, they won't touch the, touch the ground. And I get right on up to the edge. <laughs> Galilee. 
Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. You know, today, the wedding business is a billion dollar enterprise. I did not know, of course, I had been married, so how would I know? <laughs> but I did not know how much money is made off the wedding. You know, they hold train shows where you can get caterers and planners and graphic designers to help you prepare for your special day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, on top of that, then Lord forbid you got to find the dress, right? <laughs> well, well. Don't, don't y'all, don't you? Don't you don't <laughs> act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Especially those who have been married. Then, you know, fellas, we got to get a tux, right? And you can't never use the one you own. You got the written one. <laughs> then there is entertainment, which can be as basic as a DJ at the reception. That's right. And God hoped that you belong to a church somewhere <laughs> where the choir would lend their services to you for free. Because <laughs> if you don't, oh, then you pay for the wedding service. Invitation to Lord catering. Mm -hmm. See, the catering of a meal is serious business. Mm -hmm. And the cost fluctuates by the number of people you put in a seat. Oh, yes. And I have seen and heard about some arguments amongst some friends of mine that have gotten married over the number of butts you're going to put in the seat. <laughs> You know, the average time for a wedding ranges between 30 minutes to an hour and a half. That's right. That's right. And the average time for a reception is somewhere around four hours or so. <laughs> and see, during the reception, you got to have the cocktail out. Did the reverend just say cocktail? Yeah, the cocktail out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Just because y'all don't want me there, don't mean I don't want y'all to <laughs> Then you got to have the first dance, right? Yeah, that's right. Then the champagne toast and the speeches. That's right. And y'all drink the champagne. It ain't sparkling water. I know that. <laughs> then you got to have the dinner. Yeah. Well, Marcus, you got two girls, but I'm pretty. A wedding in Jewish custom was a celebration. Mm -hmm. And they invited the entire community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All their doctors. And it went on. They partied yeah. for a week. Yeah. What were these weekend events? They party for an entire week. As a matter of fact, it was so serious that if something went wrong at the wedding, they could take you to court and sue you because they didn't have a good time. <laughs> and you can see references of this in our society because it's looked down on the bridal party if the wedding doesn't respect it. Y'all run out of no food or no alcohol at the wedding. Because yeah. Negroes will talk about you. <laughs> Matter of fact, some of y'all go just for the cake. <laughs> and if the cake ain't no good, <laughs> that ain't even something to get back. Get back to the sermon. <laughs> See, this is the beginning of Christ's public ministry. As a matter of fact, he had just called 
his disciples, some of his disciples. He had been baptized by John, tempted by the enemy. He called Philip, Andrew, Peter, and Nathaniel. And if you don't remember Nathaniel, go up to John 1 and 46. Nathaniel coined the phrase, if anything good come out of that. <laughs> That's Nathaniel. Yeah. Yeah. Now, life then, a wedding is a celebration of life and together. But see, we've made it half sacred and half secular. Mm -hmm. See, y'all want it sacred when you have a minister providing the ceremony. And you make it secular when you don't let that same minister come to the reception. <laughs> 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 Yes, 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 preach. 
<laughs> See, God is our, Christ is our kinsman, redeemer. Yeah. We're, we're, we're kin, we're grafted into the kingdom of God by our faith in Christ. He is our kinsman, redeemer. And he is so kin to us because Christ experienced everything we experienced here on the kingdom of God. All right. <laughs> See, see, y'all like secular stuff, so let me get you. You know, you know divorce rates for first marriages, you know how long the average first marriage lasts? <laughs> you might have an idea. Somebody said seven years, I heard seven twice. Uh, if I ask you one more, yes, me. Five. 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 Look shut, look shut. Thank you. Eleven years. Your first marriage lasts 11 years. They say if you make it over four, you strengthen the bond if you get past the four. But the average marriage lasts 11 years. Wow. For your second marriage, it is seven and a half years. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 The question at hand, given why we exclude God and the representative of God at the wedding is, did you invite them to the party? Well, well. Did you invite God to your celebration? You plan and prepare for everything else. Yes. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You put yourself under more stress about a day. was gone. Jesus' mother said to him, say, I have no more wine. Jesus said, woman, this is the NIV. I switched to the NIV now. But the NIV said to him, he says, woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. But, but watch his mother. This is what power is. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Okay. Nearby stood six, six water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servant, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw out some and take it to the master of the bank. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted water that had been turned into wine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we invite people to weddings we have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, perhaps one of the reasons you invite God is this room. One of the reasons he ain't on the, the invitation list is because you ain't got no relationship with him. We have a problem inviting God or God's representative to the party. Or is it that we only want God to come so far? Because we don't want him to see how much of a mess we truly are. Mm -hmm. See, we want a ceremony in church. And don't let someone in the immediate family be a big shot in the church community. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's only popular from a planet perspective. <laughs> A church wedding about to take place, but you're not inviting God to the party? Mm. We, say, we say stuff like, I want to be comfortable and play the music I want to hear and drink what I want to drink mm -hmm. and do what I want to do. Acting like God doesn't know who you are. <laughs> and better yet, acting like God's representative don't know who you are. <laughs> celebration after the crowd is gone and have to fix something after it's gone wrong? See, God has been trying to help you fix your life for years. But you don't want to party with him in all areas of your life. 
you know, those sour moments that you don't want to be sour. See, during the party Christ was invited to, they ran out of wine. Theologians suggest that the wedding was a relative of Mary, Jesus' mother. They also suggest that the family was not wealthy and that the added guests of Jesus, Philip, and Nathaniel could have led to a shortage of those drinking wine. As they are running out, Mary says to Jesus, they have no more wine. See, Jesus responds, his woman, why do you involve me? As a child raised by a black woman, this makes me wince just a little bit. <laughs> but Jesus wasn't disrespectful. In culture, it was progress when he's grown. He started, he started his ministry at this time. He, he, he's asking a question that he would ask of any person of respect. Woman. He is not being degrading to her. I need you to understand that. See, in my view, though, that got me hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and see, we got to also understand, ooh, this is Christ's mother. Who birthed him? Who carried him after an interaction with an angel? So she knows who he is. She knows what he is what? Capable of. She knows he's God. Regardless of what anybody else knows. She tells him to do whatever. He tells you. This is not a mother who uh, doesn't believe. She believes in the power of Jesus. Do you ever remember your mother's words to you about your relationship with Jesus? Mm -hmm. She says to the servant what every mother has said to a child that believes. Take, if we say it this way. Take hold of Jesus' hand and don't let go. Mm -hmm. that, that's how we say it. Because what we're saying is do what he tells you. Follow him as long as he's leading you. Exactly. That's the same thing she's saying. Mm -hmm. Do whatever he tells you to do. And see, our problem is we don't like to be told nothing. Yeah. That's why you got a problem coming to church school. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be told nothing. <laughs> but you're the first one banging on your knees. See, Jesus makes a strange request to take the ceremonial jars. See, these were used by the Jews to clean, uh, clean or undefiled. And undefilement for Jews can happen in everyday life. You know, they wore sandals, they walk on dusty roads, you come into somebody's house, you wash your hands and you wash your what? Feet. 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 Have to spend a little time on the beach. I would go over to where the water spout was, push the water spout, rub my, my, my flip flop and my foot under the water to get all the sand off my feet. That's it's right. the same thing the Jews would do as they went to someone's home. That's right. So Jesus makes that what do you want us to do? Has God ever given or made a request for you that seems unusual? Has God ever asked of you to do something that just ain't gonna come? They're taking ceremonial pots and they're filling with water. I can hear somebody parenthetically shouting out of the passage of the scripture saying, Jesus, we need wine, not pots filled with water. <laughs> Then it states that once they're filled with water, take some to the head waiter 
Jesus. We are out of line. And he wants us to take water to the head man. Mm -hmm. See, see when, when, sometimes when you're shook and you're under pressure, think about the pressure that the waist has under, because the waist has is representing the family. And you know when you get mad at a restaurant, the first thing you take it out on is your <laughs> See, I don't know if I told this, this story in here before. There's a CEO of a company I cannot remember right now. But when he is hiring an executive, he does something that's extremely interesting to me. He, he goes to schedule a breakfast meeting with his, uh, his interviewee. And he gets there a little earlier than the interviewee. And he goes to the waiter that's going to be waiting on him. And he pays that waiter a little bit of extra money to mess up the interviewee's order. Wow. Because what he's interested in is the interviewee's character. Right. How he or she responds to a difficult situation or when things just don't go the way they want them to go. Yes. It is in those situations where your character mm -hmm. shows. So Jesus telling his servants to take water to the head waiter who was looking for wine. Does that remind you of your life when you've asked God for one thing and he tells you to go do another? <laughs> I'm asking God for X and God tells me to go do Y. Y ain't got nothing to do, God, with what I'm asking you. Right. But see, what we don't realize is your blessing is caught up in serving somebody else. <laughs> and our problem is we don't recognize that as we go handle Y, we don't realize it's Y. Why well, I got what you need, but you so caught up on what you need, you can't go and use what you got.
So they take a while to the head waiter to taste. He tastes most served best flag. I mean, most served best first to give. See, 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 here's the thing. What I'm trying to convey to you is when Jesus is invited into your life, everything always turns out for the best. Yes. See, no situation you face is too difficult or too challenging for him to get glory from your life. Amen. Yes. Pain is sometimes used to get your attention and to get you moving towards your purpose. Have you invited Jesus into every aspect of your life? I, I, I'm going to use our conversations to show. We were just talking about her going to the concert. I said, well, Jesus, in my mind, she's telling the concert, I know she's having the concert. I said, Jesus, know you like having a <laughs> what you What you got to hide is for? <laughs> now, if what you like is separating you from your relationship with God, you're going to have to do something about that. God is going to see to it that you do something about that. Yeah. But God is not against the party. Right. God is against you destroying your salvation for the party. Mm -hmm. God is against you doing things that's going to cause you injury for the party. God is against relationships that don't mean you any good in the kingdom for the party. Yeah. But God is not against the party. does not need for you to feed him. He only needs for you to open your life and make room for him. We are usually afraid of change and what it will cost us. So that's why we don't have a relationship with God. Because it does cost you something. Salvation is free, but there's some dirt you're going to have to dig up in your life to have a relationship with God. Amen. There's some things that you can used to do that you can't do no more. There's some places that you used to go that you can't go no more. See, let me help you. Let me lay this plane. Ain't no bigger rap music fan in this community than me. Friday night, there was an old concert. I wanted to be there. I toiled all week long when I landed back in Louisville, Kentucky, about being at that bar. I wanted it. But you know, something in me says you can't go listen to all that cussing all day and all evening long and then bring words of comfort to somebody on Saturday. Well, well, well. Okay. Well. That was my dilemma. Yeah. And I'm glad I listened to God. Mm -hmm. You ain't the only one struggling. <laughs> guests into your home for an event. What preparations do you make for them before they arrive? Y'all cook food, clean up, dust, go find a good child. Put them towels up in the bathroom. You ain't got no plans on nobody wiping their hands on them. But you put them up for them.
So you can know a little something more about God that will give you some power when you leave these doors. Well. I don't worry about you when you're in here. I worry about you after the benediction. Because mm -hmm. that's when the devil is waiting to jump on your back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when your job jumps on your back. Mm -hmm. That's when the people you thought that you could trust <laughs> betray you. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's when the people you thought that loved you stick knives in your back. Mm -hmm. Spouses become difficult to deal with. Most problems with spouses are simple. It's because you got too selfish. And what I mean by that is if your job is to take care of him and not worry about how he treats you, but just worry about the way you treat him, and your job was not to worry about how she treats you, just how you treat her, it would be a whole lot different. Amen. But that ain't what we do. We keep score. <laughs> <laughs> That's the count. I'm ready. See, our job is to be sharing the gospel with others. Our job is to be working active in ministries to improve our lives and the lives of others. Our job is to be assisting the local body and the local community to live their best lives for God. See, in doing this, we honor the guests that we have brought in our lives. Mm -hmm. And that guest is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. To God, I am Amen. Amen. Amen.